everyone. Thanks everyone for joining in. Uh, we'll have Coach Mosley, if you could start just giving a, a brief statement on your, your thoughts about the upcoming season, and then um, we'll shoot it over to questions. So just use the raised hand feature and I'll call on you and we'll go from there. Okay, well, um, thank you all for coming. And as you uh, probably can imagine, this is not the season that any of us had anticipated or the year <laughs> um, that any of us have anticipated. Um, but on the heels of kind of March 12th, everything's shutting down um, earlier this year, we are officially in basketball season and, and that's exciting for the team and for us as a staff. Um, you know, we have been practicing now for four full days with all the team. Um, we gave them an opportunity to go home since we didn't play non-conference. So they went home from November 20th to the 29th. Um, and then per BU protocols, they quarantined for seven days um, and upon their return and had to get three negative tests. And, um, and then we had three additional days of small groups just to make sure nobody uh, tested positive on the back end of that. These are all the really fun things that you learn uh, when you're trying to play athletics during a pandemic. Um, but uh, we have, everybody came through with flying colors and we've all been um, practicing together now for this past week. Um, we have today off and then we, um, I think we're, we'll have about 15 more practices approximately until we play on uh, January 4th. Um, excited to take on Holy Cross, obviously Crosstown rival um, or city as it were. And we, um, you know, they have a new coaching staff, um, but same players for the most part. We've added, um, you know, Emily Esposito will now be eligible finally after having to, to sit um, last year. Uh, so this is an exciting time for us to be able to add in her and then our two new freshmen, Sophie Beneventine and Kelsey Mingo, who have already made an immediate impact um, within practice um, and returning uh, really four starters um, and five, if, you know, depending on what time of the year we were talking about starters. So very excited about the, the talent that we have coming back and also the new talent we've infused with and just Hopefully we, whatever opportunities that we get to play basketball, we're going to take advantage of them. Um, I guess I'll ask the first question for you, coach. Thanks so much for doing this. And thank you, Meg, for setting this up too. This is awesome. Um, at what point during this semester do you feel like your team got comfortable with the process of all of the COVID guidelines, how that affects you guys in practice, learning the new schedule with everything. How, how long did it take for, for your team to kind of click into it? Yeah, I mean, I think um, to be honest, I think we're still, you know, navigating that, right? It's, um, there's, it seems some days there's always something potentially new or, you know, and all of the things are to try to keep us healthy. So uh, we, from the top down, um, my staff and I, we tried to kind of adopt a mentality of, um, we just take it day by day and whatever that day brings us, then we'll kind of, um, you know, cross that bridge when we get to it. So um, there was, you know, there's a lot of anxiety around everyone, right? Nobody wants to get sick, nobody, when you're dealing with a group of 15 players or 14 players and four coaching staff members, everybody's on high alert all the time. So I think, um, you know, to the extent that you can be comfortable with the testing cadence and wearing masks and practice and all of those kinds of things, socially distancing, I think, you know, they've done an excellent job adapting, but I think each day um, can potentially present a new challenge. So we're just trying to take it day by day. Yeah. And when you guys, um got the schedule and saw that you're playing, I think you're only playing five other opponents, I believe the entire regular season right now. Um, does that change how you and your staff prepare for games because you are focusing so much more energy on five opponents versus say like 15 plus? Yeah, I mean, I think um, it doesn't necessarily change our approach in the sense of like, oftentimes our philosophy is to worry about like us and kind of what do we have to get better at? Um, but I think, you know, when you're prepping for games, it, it definitely is different because we normally play a Wednesday, Saturday schedule in, in conference. You normally have, um, you know, nine to 11 
a preseason games or non-conference games to kind of get you know your mojo going a little bit and you're going into the conference and you're feeling good hopefully about where your team's at or you've learned some lessons along the way and so we're a little bit as is everybody in the conference untested when you kind of step out there in that first game and um and then the you know saturday sunday setup um the back-to-back -back opponents in one week i think our prep will be more um kind of focusing on ourselves the first part of the week and then our opponent that second part and that, that in between um time frame which is really after the game on saturday and before you play on sunday will just be like small tweaks you know um what, what can we you know what did we not feel like we did great in that first game or what really worked well and we want to kind of continue to to do because both teams are not going to be able to make dramatic changes you know in less than 24 hours but um, I think that's really going to be the, the key as far as the prep goes. Brady, you have a uh, next up. Yeah. So coach, you have obviously your veterans who have done it for you, but you've also had some freshmen who showed up last year and I assume are going to take bigger roles. So how does that, you know, workload kind of play out and what are you trying to focus your offense around this year? Yeah. So, um, you know, we, we do have, um, quite a bit of firepower, right? We were turning, and the freshmen from last year are now sophomores got a lot of playing uh, time, a lot of experience, which I think was, you know, great for them to have that under their belts um, at such a, a young stage of their careers. Um, our offense um, before and, and particularly now is kind of set up that if we can have five players on the court that can score, um, which we do, and um, we don't have to necessarily kind of manufacture um, like only you can only do this and you can only do that and um, but it really there's more of a flow and a fluidity to what we're trying to do now and um, I'm excited about it because when you have all five um, players who can score you've got weapons everywhere you really can't take anything away um, or try to you know if you if for example Marin you know she's coming back she's such a big target inside if you try to double her that's fine we've got guys on the perimeter that can you know shoot or drive it so um, I think it's going to make us really tough matchup and and that's really ultimately in recruiting what you want to get to right that you have, um, you know, weapons in all five spots. Anyone else. Oh, Brady again let's go well just you know another one on my mind you talk about all these returning players that you expect to make such an impact um so it's easy to say like oh it's the same group coming back but do you feel like there are any major differences within your team this year from one year to the next 100 percent. yeah i mean um you know we've got um in emily esposito who transferred in from villanova who's now eligible and then our two freshmen um year to year, I don't think you ever have the same team unless, of course, you return everybody and you don't sign anyone new. And even then you would hope that they're not the exact same because they've gotten a year older and more experience and, and so forth. But yeah, this group is um, the, where we're faster than we've been in the past. So we're going to try to play at a quicker pace. Um, you know, we're longer on the perimeter. And so just from a defensive standpoint, I think we're going to be able to get out and um, you know, attack our defenders or our, the offensive players um, a little bit more and get in passing lanes. Um, we've got some some different skill sets that we've been able to add. Um, and so, yeah, the the core that we bring back were really good last year. And obviously we finished second and, you know, had our eyes on, on uh, you know, winning the Patriot League Championship and going to the tournament. And that fire is like has not extinguished in our kids um, bellies, you know, it's it's burning even brighter. And so there there's a whole different type of focus. And I think when you add into it, everything that they've had to sacrifice to get to this point um, in the pandemic to try to play, um, you know, the resolve and the focus, I'm really excited for them to get an opportunity to show all the hard work and um, and sacrifice that they've put into it. Back to Ethan. Um, as far as your two freshmen go, how has it been this year getting to work with kind of integrating a smaller newcomer class versus you had five and six, if you count Emily last year, has that changed for you? And do you anticipate either of the freshmen being ready for a rotation role day one, or is it more of a development process for them? Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I mean, 
two versus five or six is, uh, is, is, is huge. And so some of that has been great because they've just had to kind of like get on board and like, you know, there's, we teach, but um, a lot of it also is like, you know, watch the guys in front of you. Let's, you know, let's bring you along a little bit quicker. And they're both um, pretty fast learners. And so it's been good to, to be able to integrate them in and not have so many different new players that you have to bring in, right? The, and they're both perimeter players. So um, a lot of our post stuff that we do, it's, it's you know, th those guys get it already and they know. So, um, and then they have a veteran group with Katie and with Sid who can kind of bring them along and, and show them kind of the ropes from the guard standpoint. So Kate's done a great job leading and making sure that they understand like how we do things, what you're looking for, especially for Sophie, she plays um, more of the point guard position. Um, you know, it's been, it's been really fun to kind of watch their development. As far as their um, getting into the rotation, you know, I think that's kind of what we're trying to figure out right now in practice. When we're playing, we're playing quite a bit more up and down. Um, you know, we call it ODO, like offense, defense, offense, or we'll just kind of keep going. And um, and so we we try to see different combinations. And they've held their own when they've been with um, you know a group of veterans or returners. So um, I guess time will tell. That the nice thing is is that we do have these back to back games. So it really lends itself to to play more people um, and get more people into a rotation from game to game because you know it's it's a tight turnaround and it's tough for you to play you know a short bench in two games in a row. Any last questions? Oh, Sarah. Oh, your your audio went out now. Oh, no, there you are. OK. <laughs> so you did have a very successful season last year for your first season as head coach. I was wondering how like you managed to keep positivity up and like what you strive to accomplish in your success. Yeah, so um, this actually was our, that was our second season. So first season was, uh, no, that's okay. Uh, first season was um, definitely a learning experience. Last year, I think we took another step forward. And I think that, you know, oftentimes you can rest on your laurels, but I think for us, we just wanted to, um, we're not satisfied and that's what we kind of let them know. And we also know that you know, from one year to the next, nothing is guaranteed. So you start back again, everyone's zero, zero, and you have an opportunity to make a statement and, and decide, you know, what is this group going to accomplish um, with the opportunity that's given? So, um, you know, I think that we have something really special. I've told my team that from day one with this group, that, that this is a really special group. And um, I'm excited about being able to kind of go to battle with them. Um, but yeah, we just want to build on it. And you know, we have, we have spoken out to them and we've said it and we kind of claimed it that we want to win a Patriot League championship. We want to go to the NCAA tournament. They're not shying away from that. I think when I first got here, when I said that to them, some of them believed it and some of them were like, I don't know if we can do this. And now I think that they are like, no, that's why I came here for our, you know, for our recruits. This is why I came here. This is what we've talked about in the recruiting process. This is what you know, we want to accomplish in addition to, you know, attending BU, getting great education, I want to win. And, um, and I think they're doing everything that they can to, to put themselves in position to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Anna, you got anything for me? Yeah, actually, I think we talked about this a little bit earlier, but um, a lot of the other teams like within your mini conference too, like Colgate and Holy Cross had a lot of turnover in the off season and you guys really didn't as much. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering like, if you think that makes a difference at all with how you prepare for teams? Yeah, I mean, I think some of it, right, is players that graduate and you know that they're, the dynamic of the team changes. And I think especially for, uh, for Holy Cross and for Colgate, um, you know, the seniors that they lost were a, a integral part of what they did. Um, and so, um, I know they may be younger, but I also think with the change at Holy Cross, that could be, that's going to be interesting to see. Now, fortunately, um, their coach Maureen, she was the coach at UNH. So we've played against them before. And so people typically don't change their style a ton. 
um, you know, as far as kind of the way that they do things. So uh, we can watch some of that film and then personnel of, of the Holy Cross players. But I think, um, you know, us having a, a core group returning definitely puts us at some sort of advantage because those players have played alongside each other and, and they also kind of know what to expect um, from Patriot League. But, um, but I think, you know, like I said before, everybody's zero, zero. And, and, you know, once, once you tip that ball, then we'll kind of really see um, where everybody stands. Anyone else can do one more. All right, Ethan, wrap it, send us home. <laughs> okay. Um, so I guess this is similar to a little bit to a, a different question you were asked, but obviously your first two years, um, one, your first year was kind of a learning experience. Two, you had a young team. Um, and with the success that you've had both years, I feel like not only do you have your own expectations to win a championship, obviously, but now, especially this year, it feels like for the first time, everyone else in the conference really is looking at you guys as a, as a championship contender. How do you manage those expectations and kind of keep that from being overwhelming? Yeah, I think I would say that my experience coming from Connecticut and that that was like every year the expectation was to win a national championship. Um, that prepared me to kind of approach this like where you embrace the pressure and you kind of, you know, you like it as opposed to that you shy away from it or you're, you know, there, there may be some kind of, um, you know, uh, a negative. It's uh, like, I, I, I like that, <laughs> the expectation. I, I like, um, you know, seeing what we can do. I mean, I came in here and we were picked ninth and I'm like, we're better than ninth. I had no idea how good we were or <laughs> we were going to be better than ninth, but I just like believed in, okay, the process we're going to, you know, we have hard workers, we can develop these players and, and let's see what, what happens. And so, um, for me, I think my kids react um, off of the way that I approach things. And so if I'm like stressed or if I take on the, the pressure of it and it starts to boil over to them, I think that they'll feel that and I can't do that to them, right? They have enough on their own plate to just try to come every day, work hard, show up and perform. And so my job is to really kind of keep um, keep them balanced and also like take on the pressure. Like they, they shouldn't feel the pressure. The pressure is on my, myself and our, our staff. And if we're prepared, I think that we're, we put ourselves in a really good position to, to be successful. Cool. Well, thanks everyone for joining today. And thanks coach Mosley for your time. And we really appreciate everyone's support and coverage of the team. And we're looking forward to a great year. <laughs>